Hey coders, welcome back to our full app walkthrough here. Um, from the last video, we just finished installing, linking dependencies, and discussing what they're gonna be doing for us. We're gonna do a little bit of housekeeping before we attempt to go ahead and do a first run of our apps to make sure everything's up and running. I already have my Android simulator device ready to go and other Windows users should be doing the same thing. If you're working on an iOS device on a Mac computer, you shouldn't have to worry about it because Xcode will automatically launch your simulator for you when you run the terminal command of react-native run-ios. So with that running in the background, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. This app.js, we don't need anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this file. It is just a recreation of the JavaScript file of this guy, which our app.tsx now handles. I'm gonna go ahead and just clean up everything we really don't need in here. I don't really care about this, so the platform doesn't need to be imported anymore. I'm gonna delete the bottom two text components right there, so we won't need this instructions style anymore. I'm going to leave container for now. Um, you know, we can leave this welcome message for us so we have something clear on the screen text-wise. We know it's working. Or we could just change it to something like, you know, AALMAO. I'm going to save this file. And I'm going to do some more refactoring in here. When I was a student, I didn't realize I could do this initially, but the structure of your directories really don't matter as long as your import and exports are correct. And any students who attend or watch my webinars will know I'm a big proponent of showing them early on how they can take advantage of subdirectories to structure their projects a lot cleaner. Because when I was a student, I remember I had all of my routes on my server uh, in like one directory, which might have 15 files in it. Same thing for like my React components and things like that. So we're gonna try and do a little bit of early housekeeping so we can build this app a bit more structured as we move forward instead of having to refactor a lot later on. As always, I'm gonna go ahead and build like a source or make a source directory that we're gonna have our code in. I'm going to move my app.tsx into there. Um, hopefully my VS code has updated you, my import for it. And we're going to check that together by going into my index.js where indeed it recognizes we moved it into the source directory. I'm going to make sure this file is saved. I'm going to close this test file as I don't need it right now. And I'm going to go ahead and prepare a new folder called components. They'll be adding some stuff into later. I'm going to go ahead and also add a screens directory where we're going to be coding the screens in our app and the screens we made up of components. So that's how we're gonna be designating the difference between our class. They're all gonna be probably class-based React components rendering some kind of native stuff. And it is going to be easier to understand once we get going here, but we're gonna have certain components that are called screens, like what the user is seeing, and screens will be composed of components where we're gonna keep them in a components directory. Now with this refactor, or this little housekeeping bit done here, hopefully with the files saved, and I should probably make sure they're saved. Okay, good. We're going to go ahead and try to give it a run through. We're gonna see if any errors happen and see if I run into the same issue I had earlier. I'm gonna do a run-android, where I had a node module problem since there were certain file paths were installed using backslashes and backslashes and a string are escape characters meaning it was doing backslash node modules instead of forward slash node modules which resulted in an <laughs> there it is it resulted in the value of ode modules rather than node modules because it can't resolve this backslash so this is exactly what I encountered last time, and I'm not sure if it was a problem with using NPM to install this versus Yarn, or if it was one of our dependencies that overwrote something by mistake, but we can probably fix it. So as usual, we're gonna read our error, and it's something, and it's a problem with settings.gradle in the Android directory. So it's our Android build that's messing up, so you iOS users might not have this problem. So in our Android directory, I'm going to collapse all that. We had to go to settings.gradle. And let's see. There's the problem. And you'll notice that the N's and R's and A's are a slightly different color. Like I had mentioned in JavaScript, in a string, the backslash stands for an escape character. So what's actually happening is... Um, these guys are saying, hey, this is backslash N, which typically stands for a new line in a string. So it's escaping this N, and we're, instead we're resolving... Ode modules for the Ode JS library, I guess. I don't know. I'm just going to highlight this backslash and do a replace of all of them to forward slash. Save this file, 
close it out, and we're going to try again. I'm going to clear my terminal and try and run React Native run Android again, and we're going to see what happens. Hopefully, my old bundler being, or my old Metro bundler being, it doesn't mess it up, but we shall see shortly. And the first build will sometimes take a while, so don't be surprised if you're on an older computer, this might take a couple minutes. Um, even on my machine, which is starting to show her age a little bit, she, uh, she still runs pretty fast, but it still took a surprising amount of time to the point where I actually got up and got a water, which I hardly ever have to do with any other projects I code. Yep. Good times. Yeah, I thought the uh, the backslash thing was kind of funny. I, yeah, <laughs> ode modules. But um, let it run, let it build, let it go. And then almost there. Come on, don't fail me now. Yay, LMO, we got it. All right, this is a good starting point for our React Native application. We have a TypeScript template ready to go. We have our source components screens ready to go. We know our dependencies are probably working as we've corrected any errors. We don't have anything. And this is always a great starting point for your projects, right? You have your fundamental setup. You have your framework ready to go. And after this video, we're going to go ahead and dive in on building our very first Stack Navigator. See you then.